Today on Exploring Nevada, we focus on an exciting new project. Throughout Nevada, people are raising funds for a statue to be placed in Washington, D.C. A statue of Sarah Winnemucca, arguably the most influential Native American woman of the 19th century. During a troubled time in Nevada's history, when European immigrants arrived in droves and settled on Indian homelands, Sarah Winnemucca worked tirelessly to improve the living conditions of her northern Paiute people. As a lecturer, writer, and educator, she helped shape the course of Nevada history. A leader of her people and a woman well ahead of her time, she was unanimously selected by the Nevada State Legislature to represent Nevada in Statuary Hall in the nation's capital. Her likeness will stand alongside other statues from all 50 states, including Nevada's former U.S. Senator, Pat McCarran. Now, the task is to raise $150,000 to carry out the project. A committee drawn from around the state will then select a sculptor, and the real work will begin. To help us better appreciate the legacy of Sarah Winnemucca, we turn to Dr. Sally Zanjani of Reno, whose recently published biography sheds fresh light on this extraordinary woman. And Sally, thank you very much for taking the time to help us better appreciate Sarah Winnemucca. You wrote in the prologue of your, your recently published book on Sarah Winnemucca that she looms above the historical landscape of the Great Basin like Mount Everest. What is it that is so compelling about Sarah Winnemucca? Sarah Winnemucca's achievements are, were really extraordinary. She was a spokeswoman for the Paiutes for many years. She served the U.S. Army as a scout during the Bannock War. She barnstormed the Northeast, lecturing more than 300 times on the plight of her people. She was an author who wrote the first book by an Indian woman, and she started a model school for Indian children. It's not a surprise that her father, Chief Winnemucca, said at the end of the Bannock War, none of us are worthy of being chief but her. A remarkable woman. Mm -hmm. There's, it's too bad that there aren't very many photographs of her, but there are a few. We're fortunate there are a few. If we were to meet her, if we were to be around today, um, which photograph of her do you think best captures how you imagine she was? The one I like best is, in fact, the one on the cover of my book. I think the expression here conveys Sarah's determination and her sorrow. Among the few photos we have, there are others that capture a moment. We see her as she appeared on stage in her red leggings, her fringe buckskin, when she captivated those audiences. But a photo just can't capture the electricity of a charismatic personality such as Sarah was. Then there are the photos I wish we had, but we don't. I wish we had one of Sarah as a child. There is none. And I wish there had been a photographer around when Sarah was riding hell for leather in the Bannock War toward the Steens Mountain site where her father and his band were being held captive in the enemy camp. I wish, too, that we had a photo of Sarah teaching in the brush shelter that was her first, uh, her original school perhaps particularly the moment when the boys jumped up and pushed up the roof of the brush shelter to show that they understood the word up and everybody laughed. Wonderful. I wish we had those pictures too, but you've drawn some, some pretty nice pictures with your words. She made a contribution in a lot of different areas. Would you elaborate on those? Through her mastery of English, she interpreted and mediated between Paiutes and whites on many occasions. I've mentioned her famous ride during the Bannock War as a really a close associate of General Howard as well as his scout, and one that he sought advice from on many occasions. After the war, when a large number of the Paiutes were exiled to Yakima Reservation in Washington Territory and wanted desperately to come home, Sarah moved heaven and earth to get them there. She, when she was ejected from the reservation by Agent James Wilbur from a place nearby, counseled the Paiutes to, in what was really a campaign of passive resistance. And this was long before the days of Gandhi or Martin Luther King. She said to them, don't farm, don't build houses, don't do anything to indicate that you will accept staying at Yakima. 
and that is what she did. Also, she appealed to high officials, Secretary of the Interior Carl Schurz, President Rutherford B. Hayes, and eventually to Congress in Washington, D.C., to get permission for them to go home. And this was one of her main reasons for speaking in, in the East and also on the West Coast, to arouse public opinion on behalf of freedom for the Yakima exiles, as well as to reform the reservation system, where Indians were suffering under the cruel, tyrannical treatment of agents such as William Reinhardt and James Wilbur on reservations. Let me ask you a question about how it was that she managed to do all these things being Native American at a time when the white culture and the, and the Native American culture did not get along, and also being a woman. How did she manage to do these incredible accomplishments? Well, Sarah came from a family that had a tradition of leadership. Her grandfather, Truckee, who she loved and admired deeply, had pushed her along the path of acquiring white skills, of which her mastery of English was the most important one, and peace and friendship with the white newcomers, for newcomers they were to the Stone Age world in which Sarah was born. Also, she had supreme self-confidence. You can see this in her stage appearances. She'd stride on stage, she'd speak spontaneously, never twice the same, and uh, she wasn't at all shy about doing it. So she was willing to do what it took to make conditions better for her people. She was willing to go to Washington and speak to white audiences. She was willing to go on stage. She was willing to start a school. Yes, yes. She wanted children to acquire what she saw as the necessary skill, speaking English, and then they'd be able to get along in the white world as they never could if they didn't master the dominant language. It must have been extremely hard at times for Sarah to be following the path that she'd carved out for herself, which was to try and have it be such that people could get along. Um, in your research and all the research that you did, did uh, you get a sense of, of how hard things were for her? They were very hard sometimes. Not all Paiutes were willing to follow the rational path of acquiring practical skills that Sarah, her father, and her grandfather had chosen. That was hard for her. Also, as an Indian, she faced insults from many individuals in the white community, and, and these hurt her deeply. Sarah had a very touchy sense of pride, and she never forgot a cruel word, I don't believe. Also, she felt very deeply about the sufferings of the Yakima exiles. Here you were in a situation where so many had died that their bodies overflowed the graveyard, and Agent Wilbur had ordered them thrown in the Columbia River, uh, Sarah really took their cause to her heart and moved heaven and earth to get them free. And did she succeed? Yes, she succeeded. She finally got the official permission for the Paiutes to leave Yakima and go home. So that was quite an achievement. Yes, and she always argued for the transformation of Fort McDermott in northern Nevada to an Indian reservation, and eventually that did happen. And I feel that more broadly, through her lectures and her book, she contributed to the turn in American public opinion toward justice for the Indian. When the stat statue is, is eventually done and, and put in Washington, and people get to come by and see it, um, what is it that you hope people will, will feel and, and think about as they look at that statue? Oh, well, I, I hope they will think about a remarkable life of a woman who walked out of a Stone Age world into the parlors of the intellectual elite and the halls of Congress. It was quite a journey. Thank you very much for taking time to speak with us, and thank you uh, on behalf of, of all Nevada and the country for writing such a wonderful book about this remarkable woman. Other biographies you may want to read about Sarah Winnemucca are available at your local library or bookstore. And coming up next, we'll visit with a member of Sarah Winnemucca's family who will share recollections of her notable relative.